sensitive security information. This communication, along with any attachments, is covered by federal and state law governing electronic communications and ITAR <clears throat> and may contain confidential and legally privileged information or a really, really embarrassing notice that was sent out that made everybody at the ATF look like a bunch of little twits. <clears throat> if the reader of this message, or you, is not te, yes, I had a spelling error, the intended recipient, you are hereby notified that any dissemination, distribution, use, or copying of this message is strictly prohibited. Don't copy that floppy. If you've received this in error, please reply immediately to the sender and delete this message. Now I'm gonna <clears throat> I'm gonna cover that last bit. The, yeah, this was a while ago, but really, seriously, this was a rule a long time ago. If you have received this message in error, erase it and empty your trash. You're not supposed to contact them and say you received it in error unless it's obvious it was sent to you to make you look like you'd illegally received something. <clears throat> this is something you'd put on the bottom of a fax, not an email. Emails get forwarded too much. This is pre reality-based internet, or if you could call it that. The real world of the internet, you don't reply back if you've received spam. <clears throat> Seriously, why do you guys keep including this on PDFs and shit? <clears throat> if you're sending a PDF, then you're... United States Department of Homeland Security and TSA, Transportation Security Administration, alert. Mini guns mini guns put ATF on alert <clears throat> now for those of you who've seen movies sometimes a machine gun of a particular type of automatic weapon is called a mini gun that's what makes this funny it became a meme <clears throat> the ATF has issued an officer safety advisory on what is called the world's smallest gun the alert has been issued both in New York and nationally to all ATF criminal investigators. Why? Good question. And will be passed on to other federal agencies <clears throat> who immediately responded with, is this April 1st? The latest miniature gun that is alarming the ATF community is a $7,000 gun made by jewelers in Switzerland. It's a $7,000 miniature revolver to break the world's record for the smallest functional rimfire pistol. It's extremely small. It's just over two inches long. I should really put that as the title of the video because you'll get the joke I just made without having to say it. That's what she said. It comes with a tiny, tiny $12 9 caliber, not 9 millimeter, not 9 gauge, <clears throat> 9 caliber, 2.24 millimeter rimfire bullets. It costs 10 bucks or 12 bucks a pop because they're dead ass, really scaled down versions of a 22 short. designed especially for the weapon that can penetrate skin. That's literally what was said. In a ballistic gel test, it was found to be able to put its penetrate skin legal definition with the ATF and FBI is used here. <clears throat> it means, this is the rule about it. It has nothing to do with it actually going through the skin. If this is the diameter of your BB gun pellet or bullet, if it goes more than one half diameter of the caliber into tissue and sticks or it buries itself all the way in and stays in the tissue, that's considered a penetrative injury. That's also based on firing a 50 caliber round ball, but they don't specify that. So this being... <coughs> Uh, 
That means it went in a little over one millimeter into tissue. And then stuck. Once. They don't mention how many times. They can shoot as much as it takes until they get one of them to stick. So they can say it's penetrative so they can regulate it. If it can't penetrate the skin, they're legally forbidden from regulating it because it's referred to as a non-lethal weapon. I don't know if you know that, but if it can't penetrate tissue at all, even if you get hit in the eye, it can't be considered lethal because it can't kill a person. Because it can't. Yes, a Red Ryder BB gun can shoot your eye out and actually kill people. That's actually happened. Uh, that, that really has happened. <clears throat> Including going through the rib cage, by the way. I should mention that BB guns are not actually a toy. That's why it says it's not a toy. They're regulated to a certain level, but they can still do penetrative and potentially lethal damage. This is a not a lethal weapon, obviously, but they had to make this designation so they can crow about it. <clears throat> Even its holster, this gun is so small that it could pass for a keychain ornament. Now, I'm sure that this has got to be a 4chan creation because the way that was worded is so poor. This would make this the perfect stealth weapon for a variety of criminals. Swiss Watch, this is not actually the company that made it most likely, but it might be, has acknowledged they have sold 50 of them. And they keep calling it a minigun because that's its name, because it's kind of a joke. Look at my minigun! All to one area of the world as of the publication of this. Contacts in the Middle East had asked for the manufacturer to custom make a miniature of a Colt Python pistol. They, they had an order of 50 of them. They sell them for 7000 fucking dollars each, and each bullet is a little over 12 which is a bargain comparatively. Actually, that's a better cost ratio than the cheapest revolver I can find at 30 bucks for five-cent cartridges. It's cheaper ammunition by ratio, I guess, right? Yes, you can get a $30 pistol. It's worth every fucking penny. Don't do that. But anyway... <clears throat> The company has refused to say which Middle Eastern countries, except that the people who received them went on Instagram because half of them were gold-plated and showed them off. So it's not like you need to investigate it when they're crowing about it on the Internet or whatever it was at the time. It could have been Facebook. A national police organization notes that unlike an air gun, which is more powerful and actually capable of going that far into your tissue at bare minimum and actually has been found to kill people, these little tiny guns can be concealed. There are tiny concealable BB guns and pellet guns that exist. They just dump all of the air pressure into the entire body of the gun and release the pressure at room temperature because they come out cold otherwise, so you have to release it into a very large reservoir. There is a stealth concealable weapon version of a pellet gun that was made. You nitwits. Unlike these air guns that are totally, literally capable of killing you, and this one isn't, these toy guns from Swiss, Switzerland can be concealed and shoot with gunpowder bullets that travel at 400 foot per second speed. 30 round clipazine. Okay. Again, the wording. With gunpowder bullets. Now, I'm, I'm sure I'm being trolled by 4chan, right? <clears throat> okay, now this is when it goes off the rails. I have to believe. I can't believe otherwise. This has to be bullshit. But we're going to read this. Let's ride this, Python. Ride the snake. The potential use of this toy gun is nothing else short of being criminal. I, I said toy gun. Sorry, I have to. It looks like a keychain. And an officer's guard would be down we would easily see a passenger attempting to introduce this into an airport as a keychain and put in, in along with coins and a watch and the little basket and no one would suspect. Now at this point I have to believe this is a joke because it's written in a way that you would never get out of the ATF or anybody else. No one would suspect it. So far there have been no Swiss miniguns recovered here yet. But if it came to the United States, it would be a concern. 
Swiss mini guns cannot be legally imported into the United States because the barrel is less than three inches long. Imports are regulated more than domestic guns. And in this case, it's a lot less than three inches. The ATX has confiscated thousands of disguised or miniature guns. And now we're going to get to the Fight, to fight Club reference. Including a flashlight that shoots a 25 caliber bullet and also pen guns. Remember, it's not your flashlight or her flashlight or his flashlight. It's a flashlight. The Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, Explosives, and all sorts of uh, holiday cheer party favors. I'm, why aren't they regulating sex toys? Anyway, um, reserves the right to preclude importation of any revolver or pistol or anything else. In spite of the fact that they qualify, they can just say no. And they arbitrarily make rulings like that in the United States for people who design things and want to sell them. The only thing they're allowed to regulate is anything that causes a profit motive to occur. It means if you're making and selling things, that involves alcohol, tobacco, firearms, and explosives. If you're doing this as a hobby at home, even though they get angry when they can't charge you a tax, because the ATF is a taxing it's, it's very taxing. It's a taxation department. It has nothing to do with regulating actual laws. It's not supposed to, but it's been given the right to do so. So it can set policy that's treated as law. And nobody's challenged this. And this all started back in the 30s when it became, we can't ban something, we'll just tax it to death. And then, of course, they were not allowed to change the tax rates, and it was a flat fee of 200 bucks, which means if I build a machine gun, get permission from them first, pay the $200 tax stamp. I can get a machine gun if I know how to make one. They're not that complicated. And it'll cost me 200 stinking dollars. I just have to get permission from the federal government. Once I make it, if I sell it to somebody, they have to pay the $200 back to me and whatever profit I can make. Effectively eliminating the idea that they regulate or do a damn thing about sale of weapons they wanted to prohibit. A pistol or any other handgun, and most actual long guns, for import, and also domestically, depending where you are, has to pass a safety test. It has to have a positive manually operated safety device. A safety button. You know, flip the safety. It must have a barrel length, if it's to be imported, of at least three inches. That's the barrel length from the muzzle to where it hits the breech face. The height being at least four inches at a right angle measurement to the barrel without a magazine or extension. It has to have at least four inches this way and at least a three inch barrel within the body. The body length, um, overall non-diagonal frame length has to be four and a half inches minimum with conventional grips and or with a length being at least six inches. Yes, they are not, so you keep it six inches by four inches is usually okay and has to have a three inch barrel. That means that if you make one in those dimensions in the United States, it's legally considered to not be restricted in any way near a port because they can accuse you of importing or exporting. So you always just keep it to those dimensions and the ATF isn't allowed to regulate it, nor is TSA or anybody else, nor is uh, Border Patrol or uh, Customs because it doesn't violate Customs law. And you have to like stencil the length on it. The combined length and height must not be less than 10 inches, so 4 by 6 is acceptable. That's it. And I'm sure it's got it's got to be some sort of holiday joke. I don't know. But I thought I'd read it because it's funny as hell. Anyway, they don't regulate pin fires, which are slightly lower caliber, and, and actually do penetrate the tissue, and go at Mach 1. Yes, there's a smaller diameter gun that fires a bullet that breaks the sound barrier when this thing can't. Thanks for watching. Have a good day. Good luck with that.